peace is the glory of love. When love has blossomed, what overflows is bliss, but peace resides within. Peace is the very light for the rebellious man. It is his aroma, fragrance, harmony of his heart, and indeed his at oneness with existence. All conflicts of the mind are just memories of the past. The mind is no longer divided, split, or schizophrenic. The mind has become one organic unity. The ordinary man who has not tasted the rebellion or religion is a house divided against himself. He is continuously fighting within and without, fighting for money, power, prestige and respectability. His outer life is nothing but power politics. It is a continuous ongoing warfare that ceases only when he stops breathing. Indeed, it ceases only when he stops breathing. The inner, the inner serene is not much different either because the outer and inner cannot be much different from one another. They are part of one individual, the outside and the inside. Inside, he is struggling against his own nature and his own instincts too, which some so-called wise men have condemned. Remember, you have to allow these to express and be a witness to it. He blindly follows their condemnation without any understanding of his own, fighting with his own nature. He becomes crippled. The man who is fighting against his instincts, that is, his body is bound to fight against his intuition, which is his very soul. The man who cannot find peace with his body cannot hope to find peace with his soul, because to find peace with the body is simple. To find peace with the soul is more subtle and more invisible. Man is fighting against every inclination that existence has given to him. Man is fighting against every inclination that existence has given to him. Against love and his longing for truth against love and his longing for truth because the traditions go on teaching him you need not search for truth it has already been found you simply believe in it and that is all you have to do from your side any search is considered a sign of revolt by the organized religions. You are simply asked to have faith in Jesus Christ, in Mahabira, in Gautam, the Buddha, but never faith in yourself. You are never asked to have faith in yourself. I ask you, forget Jesus, forget Mahabira, forget Gautam. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in all that existence has bestowed you in. All religions are agreed on one point that you should not allow to trust yourself. But I emphasize 
you to trust yourself and no one else. You should be constantly conscious and alert against yourself. They have made you an enemy of yourself. Hence every moment a subtle underground struggle and conflict goes on deep within you. There is neither peace inside nor is there peace outside. Yes, sometimes you claim to be living peacefully. Yes, sometimes you claim to be living peacefully while other times you claim to be feeling very upset. But the difference between your peace and your being upset is not of quality instead of quantity and degrees. Your peace is nothing else but a cold war. Your peace is nothing but a cold war. You are tired and exhausted. Certainly there is limit to everything. You need a little rest to be ready to start the old game again. So sometimes you are in a state of cold war both within and without and sometimes you are in a hot war again both within and without. But the war continues. But the war continues whether it is cold or hot makes no difference. You are never at peace. You cannot be. You have not prepared the ground for flowers of peace to blossom. You have not prepared the ground for flowers of peace to blossom. You do not deserve it. Although you have the potential, you are not worthy. It is within your hands, but you have not looked at it. You are looking away from it at everything that disturbs it. Diognis, one of the most peaceful men the world has ever known, had asked Alexander the Great, who had come to see him, Where are you going? What is your goal? What do you really want? For months I have been seeing all these armies pass by, and I go on wondering what could be the purpose of it all? And Alexander said, I want to conquer the world. Diognis said, agreed. So then you have conquered the world. It is accepted, then what? Alexander felt a little embarrassed. Nobody has asked such a question in such a manner. But still he said politely, then I will relax. Diognis gave a belly laugh and the whole valley echoed with his laughter in the early morning. As Diognis gave a belly laugh, the whole valley echoed with his laughter in the morning. Ah. He looked at his dog who was the only companion Diognese had and they used to live together. They lived their whole life together. He looked at the dog and said, Have you listened? Do you understand? And Alexander could not believe that dog nodded his head, showing, Yes, I understood. And Alexander could not believe that the dog nodded his head, showing, yes, I understood. Alexander said, I am amazed. What does he mean by nodding his head that he understands? A beauty. Diognis said, the whole existence understands that if you really want to relax, who is preventing you? The whole existence understands 
that if you really want to relax, who is preventing you? Why waste time in conquering the world? You are talking as if to relax, to be peaceful, meditative, silent and enjoy, enjoy the morning sun and the cool breeze. One needs to conquer the whole world first. Why waste time in conquering the world? You are talking as if to relax, to be peaceful, meditative, silent and enjoy the morning sun and the cool breeze. One needs to conquer the whole world first. Then peace will be very difficult. What about us poor people? who have not conquered a single thing and do not possess a single thing either, but I am already relaxed. I am at peace and I am enjoying this moment to its fullest and we have enough space to live on. But I am already relaxed I am at peace and I am enjoying this moment to its fullest and we have enough space to live on. Dhyugni is continued. You can take any place you choose. There is no question of conquering or invading here. The river bank is wide and spacious. If you want this place where I am lying down, I can move a little. You can take it. If you want my dog's place, he too can move. He is very understanding. Indeed, he is no ordinary dog. He is a dog who has come to experience peace, solace and love. Peace, solace, in love, in an awakened way, he has come to rejoice the awakening of peace, love and understanding. That is our bondage, freedom, love and our brotherliness. I do not like to be in crowds of men because they do not understand a thing. I like my dog. He is very understanding. And the dog really moved away, waving his tail and welcoming Alexander. You can take this place. Indeed. You can take this place. Alexander was never in such a difficult situation. Never indeed in such a difficult situation. How to get out from there? The logic of Diognese was absolutely clear. If you want peace, relaxation, serenity, start now. Conquering the whole world is not a necessary condition for it and not even unnecessary condition either. If you know the art, you can rejoice amidst the crowd, amidst the turmoil, amidst the vicissitudes of life. Just watch your desires, longings, ambitions, and you will be able to see who is creating disturbances. Otherwise, peace is your nature. It is soul's glory. For nine months in the mother's womb, you were in eternal peace. Peace is the stuff that whole existence is made of. Peace is the stuff the whole existence is made of. 
it is only the stupidity of the human mind that has disturbed everything around and within him. And now he is looking for peace here and there. And peace continues to elude him. Now he is looking for peace here and there in this or that. And peace continues to elude him. Peace has only one taste. Peace, the ultimate taste of existence itself. Peace is the pulse of the existence. You just have to drop all that is disturbing, creating turmoil, tension, anxiety and anguish, and then you do not have to achieve peace. It is always there. It is always there. Peace is already there deep within you. Peace is what you are made of. It is your very consciousness and very being. However, such is utter insanity of man that they even start making peace their ambition and start desiring peace. He has to understand the contradiction. You cannot desire peace because desire is the disturbance. What you desire does not matter. You may desire peace or power. You may desire money or meditation. And it does not matter because the nature of desire is always the same. Desire indeed is tension. And its goal is in the future while peace is here now. Peace is here now. Peace is not attention. It is non-tense, relaxed state of let go. There is not even the ambition of peace. There is no desire or no ambition because one has understood the simple arithmetic that every desire creates conflict and every ambition takes you away from yourself. The moment you drop all your desires, all your ambitions, you suddenly find you are sitting in peace within the temple of your being. You are sitting within the temple of your being. A rebellious man first, first tries to understand the causes that are, that are not allowing his natural flower. One basic thing has to be remembered. Peace is not a goal. Instead, it is your intrinsic nature. Peace is not the goal, instead it is your intrinsic nature. So whatever is preventing your natural growth, that has to be dropped first. If it is anger, jealousy, greed, ambition or desiring, then they are not worth the time. You are wasting tremendous opportunity of finding an inexhaustible treasure of blessings for stupid things which do not have any significance. Drop them. It is not renunciation. It is a simple understanding. It is simply becoming a more and more conscious man. The more conscious you are, the more peace will arise within the silent precincts of your own heart. The more conscious you are, the more peace will arise within the silent precincts of your heart. It has always been there, only bridge between you and it is missing. And you are running all over. 
searching for this or that, searching for the peace in this and that. So whatever is preventing your natural growth, that has to be true. Doesn't matter what it is, anger, jealousy, greed, ambition or desiring, they are not worth the time. The more conscious you are, the more peace will arise within the silent precincts of your own heart. It has always been there, only the bridge between you and it is missing. You are running all over the world, searching for it everywhere, except within your own house. Except within your own house. Remember, I have not come here to give you anything. I have none to give you. I have not come to give you anything. I have nothing to give you, no blessing, no knowledge, no wisdom. For that matter, no Buddha had anything to give you. Existence has given you everything, but you have forgotten your inner capabilities. I am therefore a reminder of that. I am a reminder of that. I learned this very early in my life. I was about 10 or 11 years of age. One day I complained to my grandmother, the Nakshbandi Sheikh, Shakuntala Devi. No one tells me to do anything. I know no zikr, jab, prayer or spiritual austerity. All I do is arrange the place for meditation every morning and evening, make arrangements when one is being initiated. It was a complaint. Indeed, she did not say anything. Then later that night, while squeezing her feet as my daily routine, she addressed my complaint. She told me, your grandfather Nakshbandi Sheikh Brij Mohanlal has given you everything and when the right time will come, things will manifest. I did not understand then and thought, she is just trying to console me, but now I understand. It is a finite way of saying the infinite. It is saying, bringing the Buddha understanding to you. You have known the existence as this or that. And that is what I am sharing with you now. All that I am doing is to wake you in myriad ways from deep slumber, but you do not want to wake up. Maybe one day while you are asleep, I will throw the ice cold water as a Zen master will do, so you can wake up from that slumber. Maybe one day I will throw the ice cold water as a Zen master will do. That is all I am here. It is up to you to wake up. There is an episode comes in the Hindu scripture, Ramayana, the story of Ram. There was a character, the monkey god Hanuman. In childhood he was very mischievous. He used to disturb the sages as they continued their austerities. It so happened once he was disturbing a sage who put a curse on him. The power, the energy on the basis of which you are disturbing everyone, you will forget this very moment. So you cannot disturb anyone anymore. 
his mother pleaded pleaded and pleaded until the compassion of the sage overflowed yes indeed he will forget but when someone will remind him of his inner capabilities certainly he will become aware of this once again this continue he remain oblivious forgetful of all that it was a moment when ram's concert sita was abducted by the demon king ravan and he took her into his captivity across the wide ocean it was known that sita is in the captivity of the demon king ravan between existed a wide ocean and it was not possible to cross over the ocean then the mental child of the creator brahma who was in the form of bear he tried to remind hanuman he said hanuman remember your glory remember your own inner strength try to wake him in myriad ways but he did not throw the ice cold water probably that time he did not understand the zen teaching hanuman sat with his eyes closed in meditation but he was hearing the voice and all of a sudden like a disaster to the wonder of everyone hanuman became aware of his own inner strength his inner capabilities leaving everyone astonished he took a leap a giant leap a leap into the other horizon a leap into the other world in next moment he is flying across the ocean to reach where sita was in captivity you are the one who has forgotten your inner glory and i am here to remind you of that